Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to be looking at distributed compute. I've got this MacBook Pro over here. It's got a really nice processor, M4 Max. Unfortunately though, it's limited in the amount of RAM it has inside it. So it's not able to run the super duper large models. However, I've also got, boom, I've got this Mac Studio. It's also got a nice processor and it's got 512 gigabytes of RAM. So in this video, we're gonna be combining the memory of both these guys together, running some inferencing on and seeing how well it performs. And as a spoiler, it runs pretty much as the average compute speeds of both of them combined, but you get that shared data of using the memory. So previously to inference models larger than the amount of RAM you're going to computer, it's a feature called model streaming. So to enable it here, you go into settings and you make sure model streaming is enabled. And then inside this portion of the settings, you choose how much of the model you want streamed in from storage. Now this makes it, well, it runs fast for the smaller models as loading from storage then is pretty quick. However, for the super large models, if you had a lot of gigabytes to stream in, it would run very, very slow. We're talking about like six tokens a minute. Let me just give you an example. I want to run Quentin Free Coder at eight bit quantization. So this model here is 500, over 510 gigabytes. So this won't even fit into my Mac Studio. So let's first use model streaming to show you how slow that is. And then we'll use distributed compute to show how much faster that is. So I'll go here and I'll say I want to stream in 1%. Now it's going to go ahead and on the server, load the model in. It takes a little while to load the model in. And uh, depending on how much you can stream into it. So you can see right there, it started prompt processing and it's just getting all ready. We can look onto the server and we've got 460 gigabytes into memory at the moment. So the remaining 40 gigabytes or 50 gigabytes is what it's gonna be streaming in. We're at 12 tokens processed. So it's uh, dramatically slow. But the good thing about it is you're able to actually run the super large models and get some output out. So it's more like an overnight task to maybe get a perfect sample of the perfect data. And then you can work on your quantization strategies for depending on your task that you're doing. So we've got a response there. It says here, the first token is produced and let's just wait for the second token to produce and then we'll get tokens per second. We've got 0.17 tokens a second and that's around 10 tokens a minute. And that's with model streaming. So you're streaming off storage. On this case, it's 50 gigabytes. Of course, if you do smaller models, you will run faster. So let's just stop that there as it is, because that is a slow process. And instead we're gonna switch over to distributed compute. So in settings, you need to have distributed compute enabled and inside the server as well. So I'm gonna go into the server here and in my serve settings, you need to allow distributed compute. So you got, you got to toggle it on both sides. The client needs to approve it and the server needs to approve it. And now when we go into chats, if you select a model, that is both on the server and the client. It will pop up with this new icon and that's distributed compute. You click on that and it's gonna start loading the model on both the computers. So as you can see here on the server, it's loading the model and on the client, it's loading the model. We can see that we're streaming into memory. We've got over hundred gigs on on my, new, my computer, my computer on my MacBook Pro. That one is at 111 gigabytes used and the model itself is using 69 gigabytes. That's on my MacBook Pro. So that's the weight of the world on this guy. And on my Mac Studio, it's still loading, <coughs> it's still loading the model. We can see that we're over 200 gigabytes at the moment. So we're, we're splitting the memory demand. Typically, you can't run this model. If you try running this model, just vanilla on a Mac Studio, it's not gonna work. It's too, doesn't have enough RAM, but together we're splitting the load. So let's just wait until that loads into memory. So now that they're both loaded on both the client and the server, we're gonna replay that prompt, continue and processing, boom. We're getting 15 tokens a second, 14.5 tokens a second. It is writing out Pascal at Q8 quantization. It's really cool. I really feel like I'm close to wanting to get a second one of these bad boys. Maybe I'll wait until the M5 Ultra comes out, something cool like that. But you can combine the memory together and you're still getting a really fast tokens per second. We're not going to the tokens per minute we had with model streaming. This is now distributed to compute with the Mac Studio and the Mac Book Pro working together. We get some really fast processing. Now looking at my Mac Studio, we were pretty much utilizing a lot of it. Pretty much 80 to 90% of the GPU was getting taxed. My MacBook Pro, however, because it had a lot less of the model inside it, we were only using 
60 or so percent. So this can even be improved with techniques like batching. So we can always have a constant production queue going. So when we hand off from the server back to the, other, the next computer, the server can go ahead and start processing the next task. So we've got a continuous cycle because at the moment it's a relay race. So what's happening is one computer is doing all the work then it hands over to the next computer, then it hands over to the next computer. And that's how version one of distributed compute work. It works on a vertical stack. In version two, we're gonna be working on horizontal scaling. So that means those computers are gonna be working together horizontally at the same time. Potentially, we should get faster performance. So this is combining, you're stacking on the performance together. The bottleneck there is communication. So there's gonna be a lot more communications every single stage of the way. Whereas uh, with the vertical compute at the moment that we've got over there, it works really well. You can do it even on the internet. So you can have one computer remotely somewhere, computing, computing over to the another computer somewhere else. It doesn't even need to be on your local network because um, the, the amount of the amount, the amount of bandwidth required is a lot less. So you can see it's working and we can continue to have a conversation. It's not limited in any way that I put in. So convert the code to C++. Processing and again, it's continuing on the show and everything's running really, really well. Now, this doesn't just work on super duper large models, it also runs on previously what I thought to be large models. For example, I'm going to load up Llama 70B. This one is the original OG model that I fell in love with. So I'm writing hello and I'm going to run this guy on my MacBook Pro directly. So we can see here, just on my MacBook Pro, we get around seven to eight or 7.5 tokens a second. Whereas if we distribute compute the operation, just waiting for it to load on the server, we can see we're now getting 11, just over 10 tokens a second. So you do just get an average of both computers going at the same time. They can even run on smaller and smaller models. So if you've got maybe some MacBook Airs, some cool stuff is gonna happen here. So it's just pretty much that icon appears if you've got the model on the client and the server and you toggle distribute to compute and it will just go ahead and just automate and be seamless and hopefully will just run really, really well. Now this is going to be, it's right now in settings. It's in preview mode, just until I make sure that it works really, really well. And right now it only supports two devices. I can scale it up to three, four, five. I've got another MacBook Pro, so I might actually make it n, n amount of devices very, very soon. Let me know if you want that feature. And let me know if you want horizontal compute because that'd be very, very interesting. But for me, this is really, really exciting stuff. Just being able to have your own cluster of computers and even reusing old hardware. So for example, my M1 Max, I've still got that guy, runs really, really well. So you can potentially reuse old devices and get these super large models into memory and going. So hopefully I'll see what Kimi K2, I wanna get that at a Q4 or Q5 quant, see if I can fit that. Previously, I can only get a Q3 quant and I got it. It was very coherent at Q3, but if I can go higher, that would be very, very interesting. And if I have two Mac Studios or maybe some guys out there with Mac Studio 512s, actually one guy emailed me, he sent me a picture. He had five Mac Studios, legend. So yeah, maybe some, maybe we can get like a little, our own little network of computers and we can tackle inferencing like the super, super duper large models. So that'll be very, very interesting. So I just figured I'd showcase what was going on. So this is gonna be an inference of 1.6, hopefully out this week, working on it really, really hard. And maybe it's already out by the time you're watching this video. If you don't know, inferences an app to help you deeply control large language models. So for example, here of all this code, you can check out the entropy. So this is the areas of the tokens it generated that it wasn't sure of. So you can see the red here means it wasn't sure if it was gonna write iterative factorial and you've got a token inspector here. So you can go here and just see what else it was considering to write. It's really, really good for helping you understand if it's lying or not. And you can even just change the way it goes. So instead of I, you can make it say result instead and replay that conversation in a different way. And it will go ahead and do that and one of the good things about this application is it's completely sandbox. So you can get it on the Mac App Store. And the good thing about having a sandbox application, it means it doesn't have any access to any folders outside of anything that you've given it permission to. So by default, it lives in its own container. Some of these large language models, they have custom Python scripts, especially when it comes with a tokenizer. So they can potentially do some damage if it's unrestricted. Whereas this one, it's a sandbox application and everything is private and lo running locally on the device. So let me know what you guys think of distributed compute version one. And uh, hopefully we'll go from there. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.